the phase that I, I look at is what I call the menopausal transition. And this is the, the year you're going without a cycle. This is actually the time I'm in right now. So I have a lot of perspective on this. And um, I can tell you, this is a really interesting year, not only from a mental health standpoint, but also from how I've had to adapt my fasts and my food. So if you're in that transition year where you're not getting a period, you're going into the part where you won't have a period for a full year, and then after a full year, we can really declare you postmenopausal. That transition year has some interesting focuses and changes that I want to highlight for you. And then the, the last phase of hormonal change for a woman is the fourth one. And this is your postmenopausal years. In this time, there is this is where you can actually move from looking at your fasting cycle from a monthly perspective. You could look at it from a weekly perspective. Um, so we'll talk about that. I'll also highlight the lunar cycle. For my menopausal transition women, this is the year you go without a period. Now, I want to say that what I want you to know about this transition year is what this equates to is you have the least amount of estrogen than you will you per, per, probably ever had in your entire life. Estrogen is the hormone that allows an egg to be released. Progesterone is the hormone that allows the uterine lining to shed. So since 35, progesterone has been consistently going down, but it's still been showing up because it's, you're still were getting a period. Estrogen has been all over the place. She has been high, she has been low, she's been high, she's been low. But in that menopausal transition year, now what's happening is estrogen's the lowest you've ever experienced her because no eggs are coming. So there's no need to bring estrogen in a, in a big way. So what does that mean symptom-wise for you? Well, hot flashes is the first one. So if you're getting a lot of night sweats, a lot of hot flashes, this is a low estrogen moment. Second is your inability to handle stress. You might find the little things in life are agitating the shit out of you. like people, situations, like your stress tolerance may just be at an all-time low. And that's because you don't have as much estrogen. You might be noticing you can't hold on to new information as much. That's low estrogen. You might notice that you're depressed more often. That's low estrogen. You might notice that you can't put in as long of a work day. That's low estrogen. And those symptoms typically heighten and peak, I want to say peak, in this transitional year. So if you've looked at some of the studies on HRT and, and BHRT, there's a lot of conversation that says this is the year we want to look to add in diff a different, uh, some, some exogenous hormones. Now, I will tell you, I like I said, I am in this year. I am very passionate about this year because this is the year that I'm living right now. And the ability, I am a workhorse, the first thing to know, I can put in 10, 12-hour days until this year. I noticed for the first time in my life that I could not focus, put in the long work days that I used to be able to do. So I've modified. I take a longer morning time. I shut off my day at four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm really learning to protect my brain because it just can't do the same effort that it used to do. So I'm acknowledging that and I'm working with it. Um, I'm also, because I know I need more estrogen, I'm doing more fasting. Estrogen loves when you fast. So I'm going into some longer fasts and I'm noticing that that I'm actually can use ketones and fasting as a real, really good tool to be able to, um, to get my brain back online. I ketones for the menopausal transition year are imperative because without estrogen, your brain can feel fuzzy. Your brain can feel stressed without progesterone. You're, you can feel anxious. Well, ketones go in and they create mental clarity and they upregulate GABA. So you are clear-minded, you can hold on to information, but you are calm. 
So that menopausal transition year, this is where I want you to focus on more fasting because the longer fast ketones become a powerful tool to help you get through this year. So if you're in that year and you don't feel like you know yourself, understand your brain is going to recalibrate and after that year, things get better. At least that's what I've been promised by my postmenopausal um, uh, friends. This time of year of your hormonal journey is a really interesting time to look at if you haven't ventured into HRT or BHRT, this may be the time for you to venture in. I ventured in to all kinds of exogenous hormones. For the last year, I've been testing different uh, natural ones. The natural estrogens and progesterones that I am loving um, are the best ones out there that I've found are put out by Quicksilver. So I will say from a natural standpoint, that has been, that worked really well. It's a, their creams. Um, if you're going to use the creams, the best place to put them um, is on thin skin. So the front of your neck, um, the inguinal area are great. But I got to tell you, some of my hormone expert friends like Dr. Sonia Jensen have encouraged me that the actual inner labia is really one of the best place to put these creams on. Um, because of the porous ability of that mucosal lining to pull the cream in and put it into action. So um, that inner labia just on the inner like lip of your vaginal area is a great spot to put some of these creams. So I did find that these creams were really helpful. But then they stopped kind of helping. And I'm doing all the lifestyle stuff I'm teaching you. So then I thought, well, about this time, HRT was becoming, you know, really, really common. A lot, we're getting a new look at HRT. And so I ventured into H HRT. Let me see what that looks like. Well, that almost sent me into an insane asylum. And I literally was so bitey. I was so irritable. And um, I was quick to cry. And what I realized in that is that HRT was not right for me because I didn't have enough progesterone. I actually did a blood test, had another friend who was look, helping me through that, did a blood test. My estrogen, estradiol was age appropriate. My testosterone was age appropriate, but my um, progesterone was low. So if you have gone in on HRT or even bioidenticals and you didn't get a positive result, I wanna point out that there's a chance you just need to bring progesterone up that it, you can't come in with estrogen when, when progesterone is low. So that's what I did. I went into a bioidentical of progesterone and I spent a couple of weeks building progesterone through that bioidentical process. And then I decided, well, let me go in with a bioidentical estrogen. And I tiptoed in. I do a troche where I can take a little bit of uh, est estradiol into my system um, it's a combination, mostly estradiol with a little estriol, and I could I could dose it, and so that I could watch my symptoms. And I will tell you, after a month of practicing upping progesterone, playing with a little bit of this bioidenticals for um, estradiol, I am finally finding a good rhythm that is supporting better mental health for me. So know that when it comes to, to this transition year, that it's really important that your focus is your brain because your brain is recalibrating during this time. So you want to pay more attention to, A, do you need to look at bioidenticals the, in the, through the lens that I just showed you? B, have you done all of the lifestyle changes I map out for you in the, in the menopause reset? I've been stronger with my lifestyle tools than ever before in my menopausal journey. I am prioritizing sleep like I've never prioritized before. I am slowing down in moments that I can better than I've ever done before, despite a very uh, rushing woman lifestyle. Because right now, my brain is the most important um, organ in my body, and I want to make sure I get through this transition. So look at your lifestyle. Make sure you're doing the five steps in the menopause re reset. 
Make sure you're prior, prioritizing sleep. Are you getting off? Another thing I've gotten off of is I've really minimized the alcohol. Even my favorite dry farm wines, just bringing that down. I've upped my vegetables, so I'm breaking estrogen down. I've leaned into more fasting so I can clean the estrogen system up. I've, I've, when I do a progesterone building day, I make sure I'm getting at least 150 grams net carbs. I'm the principles I'm teaching you. I am doing in spades for myself during this meta, this transition year because my brain really matters. So if you're in that year, please, please, please focus on your brain health. Please focus on your lifestyle as a healing tool. And if you need to venture into the bioidenticals or HRT, just know that everybody's path with those tools is going to look a little different. So make sure you're working with a doctor or a health coach that can guide you through that process. Okay, I got to interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called a beginner's guide to a fasting lifestyle. And all you've got to do is click here and you can jump right in. Okay, the last one I want to hit here are my postmenopausal women. So this is you've gone a year without a cycle. Um, your brain has recalibrated, but perhaps you are left with menopausal weight gain. Perhaps you're left with hot flashes or cloudy thinking or depression, like a lot of the postmenopausal women in my academy have told me that they're still stuck with depression. For you, postmenopausal women, very similar to the menopausal transition, I really am emphasize longer fasts. You may really, this is the time to focus on a three day water fast, clean up your insulin sensitivity. This is the time I really want you to look at your toxic load. Make sure you're not putting toxic beauty products on you. Every moment of our hormonal journey, toxic beauty products will destroy. But now you're postmenopausal. Now you've got the hormonal cancers potentially staring you in the face. Now you have Alzheimer's and dementia staring you in the face. So your toxic load really matters more than ever when you get through those postmenopausal years. You make sure you understand um, what toxins you're putting into your body. Make sure you understand how to detox. These are things that I have taught on YouTube. We teach in my academy. So if you still have symptoms, if you got to the other side of menopause and you still have symptoms, it may be a toxicity issue that needs to be handled. So make sure you're learning the, the process for that. The other thing I want my postmenopausal women to focus on, and the perimenopausal women can do this as well, is muscle building. You are going to have to fight for muscle. I can tell you as a woman who was genetically designed to build muscle, if you saw my father, the man has more muscle than he should at 86 years old, despite the fact that he doesn't work out. He's always had more muscle. I definitely took more of my dad's structural genetics. I used to be able to build muscle very, very easily. And at 53, I have to fight for muscle. I have to work really hard for muscle. So there are two ways postmenopausal women, you can build muscle. One is through more weight lifting. Now, if you don't have a gym or you don't have a weight lifting, um, uh, plan, uh, you can do, you know, you can do push-ups. You can do tricep dips. Uh, every Saturday morning in my Reset Academy, we do a 15-minute workout that incorporates muscle building without any tools. So you could come for that. You can join us over there. But muscle building workouts are really important. Less cardio, more muscle building. That's the focus for the postmenopausal woman. The other way that you build muscle is through protein intake. So for the postmenopausal woman, you need to really focus on improving, taking in a, enough protein in a day. And the reason that this is important is because A, you can build muscle through dosing in 30 to 40 grams of protein at every meal. That measurement is really important. I just shared something on my Instagram stories the other day of Peter Atia, who had just put out a book on longevity. 
that is really saying if we eat 10 grams of protein, we don't build muscle. If you eat 20 grams of protein at a sitting, you don't build muscle. You got to get it into the 30 and 40 grams per meal, which can be hard. So you've got to make an effort. I can tell you what I'm doing now is making sure that the first meal of every day has the protein requirements that I need because I notice that when I do that, when I break my fast around one o'clock, two o'clock, I come in with a big protein rich meal that A, it curbs my appetite. So then I eat a smaller dinner. And if I get my protein in then, then I can just snack on protein like beef sticks and eggs. And I, I, if I'm working from home, I'll wrap up some deli meat and cheeses and I'll do it that way. So it might be that you've got to just come in with a protein heavy meal and then dose 30 grams throughout the day without any of the carbohydrates or other additions to those meals. So protein and muscle is the key. Now, last thing I want to say to my postmenopausal women, if you want to switch to a weekly variation um, for your fasting, that is fine. And here are two that I would recommend. A 511 is five days a week of intermittent fasting and ketobiotic. Choose your length of intermittent fasting. If you don't know what ketobiotic is, get the book. Um, one day a week, I want you to stretch your fast longer than you've ever gone before. Push it so you create a hormetic stress that so you repair your your you add a little bit of um, uh, hormonal and cellular repair in. And one day a week, don't fast and make sure you're raising glucose and and you're not doing keto so that you can um, make sure you build progesterone. On the one day a week that you stretch your fast, I recommend that meal be extremely heavy in protein, somewhere between 30 to 90 grams of protein at that one meal. So big steak would be great if that's in your food repertoire. So that's one variation. If you're really struggling with your symptoms of postmenopause, like you have a lot of hot flashes, you have a lot of of sleeping challenges, you have a lot of um, brain fog uh, or weight gain, you can do a 421. 421 is where four days a week you intermittent fast with ketobiotic, two days a week you stretch your fast with a protein rich meal, and one day a week you um, make sure that you step out of fasting and you help progesterone. So those are two great weekly options. Or you have the lunar cycle. You just look at the new moon. New moon would be the equivalent to day one of your period. And everything I've taught you about your period would follow starting with the new moon being on day one. So you can do the lunar cycle as well. My postmenopausal women, we are focused on muscle building and getting your muscle uh, structure to help you not only because it's the organ of longevity, but it'll keep you insulin sensitive. My menopausal transition women, you are focusing on your brain and everything we can do to support awesome brain health so that you, you weather that, that year with um, as much grace uh, as possible and you stay happy as you transition. Okay, where are my gals that are struggling with hormonal imbalance? Bloated, feeling like you're not making progress with weight loss? you need to add these foods in so that you can support better hormonal health. There is a lifestyle that estrogen wants you to live, and there is a lifestyle that progesterone wants you to live.